a while ago, I saw this guy on Instagram whose name I don't want to say because I don't know how to pronounce it, but you can read it yourself and a link to his profile is in the description. And he is painting these mind-boggling Dragon Ball statues that look like they were pulled out right off the TV. So I wanted to try painting this 2D comic look myself, knowing of course that I won't achieve a result that comes close to these. A couple of months passed and I wasn't actively looking for a model for this topic, but someday I saw the Son Goku by Pascal Ackerman, whose Batman I already printed and painted. If you haven't watched that, check that out as well. And the good thing about this model is that his renders already look like a 2D painting, so I thought I can simply replicate what I see in those renders. Before we start with the real challenge of cell shading, let's quickly block out all the base colors. We start by masking the dragon balls in the base and then use sick green and an airbrush to paint the dragon scales. You can also take a brush, you don't need an airbrush for this whole technique. With the airbrush it's just faster to get the base colors down. Then we mask off the scales and use tile black. For the dragon balls we start with sun yellow and then use hot orange to create a darker gradient from the outside to the inside. But we quickly realized that it's pretty hard to airbrush an even orange circle around the yellow, so we basically paint everything orange to then paint the middle yellow again. And then we noticed that it also doesn't really work to airbrush yellow on top of orange, so we make a gray circle in the middle first, paint over that with yellow, and then we're done. No wait, we're not done, we also need a white highlight in the middle. But now we're done, for now. Now we make our way up the base with Vallejo Model Air Middle Stone as a base color and when that is dry we use Ghost Grey for the smoke. And because here I was too lazy to mask, I hand brushed that. The good thing here is if you mess up you can always use the other color and paint over it. For the Dragon Ball logo I'm using Model Air Yellow. For the hair I use Moon Yellow, but that doesn't turn out like I imagined it, so I mix white and yellow and use that as a base coat. For the skin tone I'm using the Model Air skin tone. Electric blue for his shirt and belt. And orange fire for his pants. Model Air Red completes the colors for the logo. When the model is glued together it's hard to reach some areas so I'm directly going in with darker colors there before gluing everything together. You could of course also glue it together at the very end, I just thought it's easier to visualize the result and light effects when it's assembled. For that I'm using a two-part epoxy resin and super glue. Off camera I also painted the shoes with electric blue and hot orange and then I went back to tile black to do the final trimming around the scales and the dragon balls. And now begins the fun part, the cell shading that hopefully creates a 2D effect in the end. Cell shading is a technique where you intentionally have harsh jumps between different colors. So initially I thought I'd take three colors for this base and then do black lines around the geometry in the end. After middle stone as the base coat, I now jump to the darkest color I want to use, which is chart brown. So with that I paint all of the crevices and the underside of the base where no or only few light will hit the ground. Assuming the light or sun directly comes from the top. Then I use bone white as the brightest color to go along all the high points. But I think I was a little too sloppy here and painted the lines too thick and I wasn't really convinced with only having three colors. So I added color number 4, khaki. This went into the right direction, but I added another color which was earth. And then finally I paint thin lines of ghost ray over the bone white for an extra highlight. I might have overdone it a little with the colors, less is sometimes more, but yeah, let's see how it turns out in the end. Then I put the base to the side and start with Goku. I grabbed the night blue again and painted the low spots. Then I mixed the base color electric blue with that white for the edges or high spots.
Then I revisited the hair and mixed gold yellow with dead white since the base color turned out too dark and colorless, if that makes sense. For the pants I tried it the other way around, starting with the lightest color by mixing hot orange and dead white and then going over the darker colors for the shadows. You can probably tell this is not really a how-to video since I also don't really have a clue yet how the technique works. For the darker parts I mixed a hot orange with model color carmine red. And then I go even darker with scarlet red. Now with the pants laid out I thought the shirt doesn't have enough variations so I went back to that. This time I mixed the night blue with electric blue to create one more color because I got the feeling that three colors are just not enough for a convincing effect. And that actually did make it better. For the hairline I mixed gold yellow with scrofulous brown. With a bit of white in that same mix I then blend the hairline with the hair tips. And then I mixed even more white in for a few strands. For the skin I again start with the lightest color, which in this case is pale flesh, and paint all of the parts that would get directly exposed by the sun. Then I mix model color dark flesh with game color dark flesh tone for the spots that would get the least exposure by the light source. Afterwards I mix a lighter tone with the same colors for the areas in between. And then I paint over the pale flash because I don't like how it came out. At this point I found out that it actually looked best if I painted over the whole base color with a darker or lighter color. My initial plan was to really just use three colors and block them out, but I think the sweet spot is four to five different color tones. Without taking completely different colors, but mixing the colors that have already been used to create the gradient between light and dark. Then I work on the face, paint the eyes and teeth with dead white, his eyebrows with sun yellow and then two black dots for his irises. For his tongue I used scarlet red again and then bloody red for the light reflection. And then I revisit the base with my newly gained knowledge that it looks better to paint over everything with different shades. For the cloud effect I use wolf grey as the darkest color and then gradually mix that white into that for the lighter spots until I end up at almost white. I start really sloppy and then go more and more detailed with each layer of color. The base was very hard to paint precisely though due to the shape and size. There were a lot of spots where I didn't have the best control over the brush since I had to use a weird position to get those spots painted. So I think for this technique it could be better to have all parts separated and glue them together after painting or to use magnets. Then I finish those little dragon balls with bloody red and then the scariest part comes. Painting black outlines. I was really scared to mess up here as the last step and waste hours of hand painting. But once you start you simply just have to continue and trust in the process. What I did here was I painted black lines along the hard contours of the sculpt, for example the veins and a few random small strokes here and there to imitate the style of the 2D drawing, if that makes sense. Did the same thing for the shoes, the stones and the clouds on the base and then I was done. 
The very last step is to eliminate the last shine that was left from the matte rattle can varnish because that can break the illusion of the 2D effect, since there is no real shine in 2D. For that I used Green Stuff Mad Max, which is the most matte matte that I know. If you look at those green scales, you can see the before and after pretty good. There is a slight shine left and the Mad Max eliminates it completely. And with that I was done with my first cell shading style model. I also have this guy printed, which I think could also look epic if I managed to make it look like he was ripped out of a comic book page. Let me know in the comments what you think of this style of painting. I like it, but I greatly underestimated how much work it is compared to a realistic looking paint style. So let's have a look at the final shots now, and if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, until next time and happy painting.